Councillors Captain Gaurav Kajar, Associate Vice President, Simulation Products. He's from Delhi. Captain Gaurav Kajar is a master marine with a sailing experience of 15 years. He has passed his BSc Nautical Science from TS Chanakya, Mumbai, and completed his post graduation from the Institute of Chartering Ship Brokers, London, with over 12 years of experience as ARI. Captain Bajaj is involved with the product management and validation of marine simulation products. He has also been extensively involved in, in oh, sorry. He has also been extensively involved in the product validation and testing of integrated marine simulation products besides handing over simulation system and providing the train, train the trainer training to the simulation users. Captain Bajaj is responsible for project management, project management and validation for cloud-based simulation projects and development of automatic simulation-based assessment modules. He is actively involved in development and validation of new customized simulation models for various clients across all geographies. Captain Gaurav is responsible for successful completion of various navigation simulation studies for port feasibility, vessel module and tasks for various renowned towns. He has been leading the OEM integration of real equipment with simulation and ARI digital operation framework that integrates and visualizes data from various live streams and sources. Can you welcome him please, Captain Gaurav Vijaj? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, dignitaries, uh, and thank you for the naval direction and organizers for inviting me. Uh, Taming technology is something which is in our blood. So, I will just have a brief introduction because uh, most of the people I recognize now in the crowd know about AI, so I won't spend too much time on that. I had some slides, but I wanted to see new faces, but I can see that. I know everything. So I will shorten that out. Okay, so AI is a leading provider for product advancements. We do a lot of product development for the latest technologies that we have. Uh, we are working on a lot of future technologies, uh, AI, we are AI solutions. Uh, there for 25 years. Uh, about 1,000 installations in 50 countries, and we have their headquarters in New Delhi, with offices in US, and now in Singapore and UK as well. A brief on the products that we have, ranging from oil and gas industry to marine, offshore, uh, mining, construction, you know it, and grains as well. So almost 75 simulators and 1,000 installations. Now I wanted to show you this, uh, what had happened is during COVID, we migrated, I mean everything was stopped. So we were kind of fixed and everyone's, was, a sword was hanging on the head, now what? You can't travel, you can't ship, you can't go, you can't play, you can't install, what now? So we took a big leap of faith and we uh, ported all our simulators online. Uh, so we, because even the ship owners are facing the same problem. How to send people, how to send people for training. I mean, uh, we did it in three months and it was the greatest challenge. So we deployed everything online and uh, we are proud to say that even after COVID, a lot of people using that technology still, still they are continuing with their journey. Now the primary topic today, the role of technology in Maritime training. So these are the digital suits that we developed over a period of time to help training, training institutes, assessments. So we had each of our cloud where we deployed all our simulators online. Uh, we have 
the examinations where we deployed everything uh, towards proper solutions and conducting the examination assessments or assessments uh, we migrated into AI and digital which talks about uh, the digitalization of certification processes and the last one is digital MTIs running the full digital MTI full solution for employee so as I told you before, I'll skip this because we're talking about the new advancements in technology for training. So use of XR, AI, AI. So we'll touch more in the next slide. Uh, for some, this must be a technical jargon. A lot of jargon looks good. But it all leads to marine solutions, marine simulators, advanced technologies and assistance. So basically you are capturing everything, all the data is uh, infused and presented or analyzed in a different way. And sorry for rushing it up because Shankar just gave me a gun that 15 minutes has been reduced to 10 minutes, so sorry about that. Okay, the most exciting part nowadays people talk about VR. Yes, VR is something which is the most main thing and I think it is a very practical thing but we have advanced more than that now we talk about VR, AR, XR so what is what I mean what is VR, XR so VR is uh, you know you are transported in the virtual world AR is something where you are working in a real world but you have assistive technologies like heads up displays on cars or even heads up displays on vessels as well nowadays now XR is a very exciting technology we are working on and we have already done a bridge simulation and brain simulation on that. So XR uh, basically means that once you are looking up, you are looking at the virtual world and you can even earmark an area whereby you can actually see the cameras are there on the opposite side and you can see the real world as well. So it's blending over the words. So that's a very practical solution for all the systems that we come in place for training. Some screen graphs for how important a VR solution can be from, especially for cadets who have never gone on board. So for them, this is like a boot because they can now see the whole engine room. Uh, they can do some limited operations of ready of panels, pumps, uh, walkthroughs on deck, in tanks, or in engine room. So, it's, it's a wonderful uh, thing, I mean the feedback that I got from the training institutes where we have interacted who are using these technologies is just amazing. A couple of more screen caps on that. Light mode launching, maximum accidents are taking place there so we can use VR or AR technologies for that as well. Uh, EC not cloud I just talked about. So this, what we did with the EC not cloud is when we deployed all the simulators online, we gave accessibility. So things which are not accessible to students, to people, so this is 24 7 available. So technology is helping the training that a person can train or I mean even late nights or any free time they can actually access this and do the training themselves. So this is self-learning mechanism and plus you get exposure because on board vessels cadets normally are put on decks. I don't know now but previously it was. I think they get some uh, time on bridge nowadays. It's a part of their talents. Now this is the latest uh, that we have developed considering uh, the assessments or the trainings that take place. So this product is called ASPA. So ASPA is, there can be a lot of words for it, automated scenario based assessment, even adaptive scenario based assessment. Now we have all lived through, yeah, let me say, MCDs, audio, video, these type of questions that we are so used to doing it, whether for training or whether for assistance. But now let's go to another world where we have the smart systems to give you smart questions or give you Get the knowledge out of it and get the human element out of it. So how we can do that? So these are basically adaptive questions which are scenario based. So instead of 
just say A, B, C, D. Probably you will be presented with a table or a log or an indicator card and you have to analyze what it is, what is the problem. This is something that you will be doing on board. So when you are seeing an alarm log, when you are seeing all these different logs in engine room or on the bridge, situations, situations can be dynamically generated. There is no fixed database. It's on the fly, you can, and there's no fixed database, so you can just generate the scenarios themselves. So this is how we developed the methodology, how we supposed to do things. So we followed, we also have a maritime training issue, so we took guidance from our teachers as well. What difficulties they are facing, what kind of uh, questions or what kind of training or what kind of tools they would like to incorporate in their training solutions. So this is something uh, we learned from them, we got the feedback and we thought let's implement this. Let's try something new. So as you can see, uh, you can have NCQs, no problem. But you can also have progressive NCQs. I mean, a human element is being taken into place. It is analyzing what you are answering and the next question will change. So every person will have a different question depending on their personality traits. So it will never be the same. Everyone is getting a different question. Every if if I if I pass all the radar questions very smoothly, why should I radar pass radar to them? Let's let's go to another level. Or we identify their personal human tendencies also, the risk taking ability through these questions. So that is how it is being very creative, adaptive, and these are controlled randomization questions and very unique ones. The whole methodology depends on learning and assessment. So we have two modules. One is a learning mode and one is an assessment mode. Which can be supervised or unsupervised. So automated, it can be deployed online, it can be uh, self-learning as well. So all types of solutions are possible with this. So this is one of the situations which is a macro simulation. Which means now you are going above your first doing the probably a smart smart questions, then probably operating a machinery, then probably operating a plant, and then you go to the a uh, fixed exercise. This may not be a simulator, it could be a smaller exercise of say 30 minutes. And totally uh, self-assessed, automatic assessments, uh, the results will come, will be appearing to the instructor, you can check it anytime. Incident replication. So for some of you, this is a very familiar thing that came in the news for a very long time. Uh, so we gave it a try, we tried to replicate it, this is something we want. So this kind of accident replication can be doing this for many companies uh, with their learning mechanisms, they can do a self training. Uh, the best part is they can put thousands of seafarers on the same scenario and check uh, and how, does, how they will behave on a similar situation. These are some operated real-time sensor views. Okay, this is a very new concept uh, we are working on, an interesting one. Uh, normally this is there in the airline industry where you are getting all the data and normally a training center is probably next to the ABC. So you are piggybacking and you are replicating the real scenarios. So we are trying to get this data ashore, which uh, many companies are doing now, especially after this decarbonization. So after that, what will happen is we will put, say, senior cadets before they pass out, or maybe afterwards if they have like junior officers. They can work on this live data and we can recreate live situations based on that data. So whatever you are getting on the AIS, the situation, the situation can be created on the fly and they can do analysis on the performance as well. So the performance is right now limited to, I would say, shipping companies in their offices with their performance guys. But this should be extended in our view to the other students as well. They, they know so little about decarbonization with so much data that is coming in, they can't really do anything. So this is for them to understand in their early years what is the importance of data, how it can improve the efficiency and they have right points in the game. I mean, you put them at this early age, I am sure 
many paradigms or many startups will pop in after this. These are some of the assessments that uh, solutions that are possible uh, with full crop training, uh, multi camera integration, road integration. So these these technologies will be increasingly being used for assessments as well. So one part is training and one part is the assessment. So these systems uh, we have already done uh, one uh, e-examination with the uh, Honorable Ministry of Shipping. Uh, so we have done this uh, POC uh, pilot project with them and uh, the written exam was taken uh, with some people at the examination center like uh, Honorable DG was talking about it in the morning. So it's, it's a very new system but it takes time to adapt but uh, very solid uh, checks and balances are in place. Technology, half of. So, okay, no problem. So, left part is probably bent out. So, basically, it's, we talk about capturing all the data through all the sensors, whether it's HMIs, we talk about audio sensors, video sensors. Uh, so, all the data is collected together and analyzed. And then, an appropriate output is taken out. So, this can be used for human or behavior analysis uh, for training. All assistance. Uh, these are the new solutions that are going to come in place. So all the traditional simulators that were used for training now will also have the same layer of proctoring and capturing of data through all these sensors. So you can see the human behavior is probably uh, some lady on the side was actually writing it down on the notes will probably come from an AI model. So a human behavior aspect will also come in addition to the training that we do. And the systems are available now. I mean, it's, it's affordable now, comparatively. So these are the new systems that I told you that we can actually integrate. You can run systems in hybrid mode. Some people in offices, some people at home. Or they can be all part of the same team. That's all for the message. I, I think Shankar and before night. Thank you. And uh, so thanks a lot for giving us the opportunity. And uh, there are a lot of technical advancements that are taking place and we wish we had we assure you that we are a part of it. And we are doing a lot probably that is coming next ten years ahead. Thank you. Well, thank you, Captain Bajaj. And I would request Captain uh, Deepak Korea, CEO of Elegant Learning Services, to please join us on the stage to felicitate.